Hey guys, today we're going to answer the question, is your guitar holding you back? In other words, you know, whether you're new to guitar or you've been playing for a few years, you know, I'm sure you wondered, like, how do you know when your playing ability is being held back by your guitar's performance ability? So the idea of a bad guitar is easy to understand. As an industry, we use terms like, you know, beginner guitar, starter guitar, student guitar, cost effective, entry level. And those terms get a little confusing because they're not real, they're just something an industry has slapped onto a guitar to explain that it's perfect for a beginner. Now, we negate that by basically saying, hey, look, um, we see professional musicians, people who actually play out every day of their life, every week of their life, and people who are on stages playing those same types of guitars. So are those guitars really entry level or are they just easy to buy? Now, the trick is this, as an industry, you gotta understand guitars are not that old. Electric guitars have only been around since the late 40s as a mainstream instrument. And, you know, the world has changed a lot. You know, your grandfather literally went into Sears and Roebuck to buy an entry-level student guitar and and then, you know, to a music store and bought a high-end guitar. So they didn't have an economic version of every guitar like we do now. So the trick is, it gets cr crazy because we still use terms and ideas that have been become dated. In other words, like, yeah, that guitar is just for students. Good enough, to, but not good enough to play professionally. And you're like, well, why is that? Is it because the guitar was only two hundred dollars or because the guitar is actually in you know is actually a bad guitar and it's going to cause me problems if i stick with it so let's see if we can identify how, what makes a good guitar and a bad guitar and how is it, it may be holding you back now the first step is you have to identify your abilities now this isn't a weight set this is a microphone stand but you get the idea in other words you have to be able to figure out what you can do and the best way to do that is to go ahead and practice of course but then when you feel you've mastered something whether it be a, a you know scale a song just a chord you have to be able to say okay this i do well now what can you do to identify that the guitar is becoming the culprit as musicians we have something that no other industry has see if you're a chef you can't go into a cooking store and bake a cake or start cooking or making stuff but you can walk into a guitar shop or a music store and pick up an instrument and start playing it so what do you do you play something on your guitar you feel very familiar with. You go like, you know what? I feel like I got this down. I put a sufficient amount of practice time into it. Now you go to your local music store and you pick up some guitars and you play them. Now they don't have to be expensive. They just have to be different. Play the thing that you feel you play well. Okay? Don't don't get not something that you barely have down. Just like that weight set, you know, right? Don't start lift. Don't go into a gym and start lifting weights you can't lift to figure out if the, you know, right? The quality of the gym. You literally have to figure out like, hey, I have this mastered. Let's see what this guitar does. If you notice that it's easier to play it, that the, the that it comes more effortless, or better yet, that your ear says, wow, that sounds a lot better than what I have, you may have identified that your guitar is, again, uh, you know, holding you back a little bit. And so now the interesting part about that is you have to go to the next step. Use your head instead of just your wallet. Now it's easy once you play, play another guitar and say, okay, wow, this guitar is exactly what he was saying. It's a, it, it, I feel like I can play better. He's right, the other guitar was holding me back. Let's go ahead and slap down the money. Or worse, you don't have the money, so you're just gonna use that as an excuse saying, hey, I don't have the money to buy a better guitar. I guess I just can't get better. And that's not even close to what I'm saying. What I'm saying is now identify on that guitar what is different about your guitar. Because sometimes it could be your limits of the guitar you currently own and sometimes it could be just as easy as a setup. A setup is a slang term for basically how the guitar performs and plays. Now I'm using my Strat and an Allen wrench to show you basically by adjusting the neck I want you to listen to what you're hearing. Now when I'm playing the guitar right now I feel like the action's a little high in other words it's a little hard for me to push down it's not really bad but it's a little high and I've tuned the guitar to open G so you can hear how it sounds. Now obviously it sounds very pleasing but yet when I press down it's a little bit of a workout right? So what I, what I can do is I can turn the truss rod, in other words, tighten it, and what's going to happen is now I get a much easier to play and it sounds great. Now if I go too far, and I was turn a couple more turns, now what's going to happen is it's super easy to play. I feel like I'm not even putting any effort into it, but it sounds like this. <laughs> right? That's not a good sound. <laughs> so we know we have to find the sweet spot, and the sweet spot is, see, and I think it's right about here. Right? Now, I, I will agree that if I loosen a little bit, it will sound fuller and nicer. But I don't necessarily want to play at that level. Now, there's other adjustments, obviously, on your bridge and intonation that will affect this. But I'm doing this as a more of an ear training exercise. I want you to hear how the guitar sounds. Now, the quality of the guitar, the way it's made, had nothing to do with the way it sounded. That was just how I adjusted the neck 
and I was able to make a one way sound very horrible and one way sound very good and and again and then find a sweet spot where it played nice and sounded very good now what if after watching this you're still like I don't know if I can hear what he's saying or I can identify what you're talking about well in that case you would definitely want to find a mentor somebody you trust that could play your guitar and say yes this is definitely a hindrance and it's going to hold you back or no this guitar is fine it just needs more practice and time put into it now the last thing I want to kind of relay that's important is this is that a lot of decisions sometimes when a guitar is not right is to go ahead and spend a lot more money to get the next guitar and although I do agree with that decision I want you to understand there's other options and that's what all this is about today is talking about your options and how to identify them and the option I want you to understand is that sometimes laterally guitars in the same price range that you just had are better decisions it's more important that you understand what you're touching than just throwing money at the problem there are there are expensive guitars that still are not playing right you need to be able to identify when a guitar is playing right so you can figure out if it's like I said it's being restrictive in other words holding you back so Take all those things into account, please. And if you like the video today, please like and subscribe so you can be notified when there's more. We also have a Know Your Gear Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter account. You can check those out. And we sell t-shirts, and if you take a picture and send them in, we'll put you at the beginning and the end of the videos, uh, which is a great way to support the channel. And I appreciate it so, so much. As always, thank you for your time, and know your gear.